Greetings! I'm here to introduce you to one of the best games I've played this year, Eric Zimmerman's Quantum. This game could be considered a 4X game, but unlike most 4X games, it plays relatively quickly. We've played two player games in about 20 minutes, three player games in about 40 minutes, and four player games last about an hour. But this can vary depending on how aggressive your opponents want to be. And to keep someone from running away with a victory, you really need to be aggressive. So let's take a look at the components. These are probably my favorite dice of any game that I own. Translucent and colorful. The quantum cubes are equally beautiful and translucent. Very nice complement to the dice. The game board is modular and made from thick, sturdy board stock. The player boards made from the same nice thick board stock as well. These player boards depict the different factions in the game. The Kepler Imperium, the Andromeda Confederacy, the Orion Republic, the Volpe's Alliance. Well, these player boards provide all the information you need to follow the rules of the game and provide spaces for your unplaced quantum cubes, undeployed ships, and places for your dominance and research dice counters. The game board tiles can be configured to accommodate two to four players. You have several setups available on this sector map sheet, as well as rules to follow so you can create your own setups. Here's a fun three player setup which takes about 45 minutes to play. It's called String Theory. Each player starts at the home planet and puts on their first quantum cube. Once placed, quantum cubes can't be removed from the board. Now you roll your first three ships which are represented by these dice. The value of each die represents which kind of ship it is. One pip on the die means you have a battle station. Two pips indicates it's a flagship. Three pips is a destroyer. Four pips is a frigate, five is an interceptor, and six is a scout. Place these first three ships into orbital position around your planet. The player who rolled the lowest combined dice total goes first. So what can you do on your turn? You get three actions each turn. Look on your player board to see what those actions can be. One action can be used to reconfigure one of your ships, which is simply pick up the ship and re-roll it. Another action can be used to deploy a ship from the scrapyard on your player board and put it into orbital position around a planet that has one of your quantum cubes on it. Orbital position is here, not here. One action can be move attack. Each ship can only move once per turn. The higher the value of the die, the farther that ship can move across the board. Each square is a space, so if your ship is a frigate with four pips, then it can move four spaces. Movement is only allowed orthogonally, not diagonally. You also cannot move through other ships or across planets. The lower the value of the die, the stronger that ship is in combat. During your move attack action, you can use one of your ship's movement spaces to enter the space of another ship, indicating that you're attacking that ship. The attacker then picks up the black die, and the defender picks up the white die to roll. Add the die roll to your ship's value and the lower combined number wins the combat. Ties go to the attacker, which can be a real bummer when you're getting attacked. The defender's defeated ship is removed from the board, re-rolled, and placed into the scrapyard, and it can be redeployed as soon as the next turn. If you attack and you win, you move up one level in dominance. If you lose your attack, you aren't destroyed and you don't go down in dominance, so there's really nothing to lose and, and lots to gain in attacking. When your dominance die reaches level 6, you get to place a quantum cube on the board. If you lose as the defender, you move down one level in dominance. It requires two actions to construct a quantum cube, and that's really the point of this game. To do so, park any number of ships into orbital position around a planet. The sum of your ship's values must exactly equal the value of that planet. No more, no less. The first player to construct all of their quantum cubes wins. So you need to plan ahead for this action because it takes two of your three actions to construct a quantum cube. If you've managed to construct a quantum cube on your turn, you get to take a super fantastic advance card. The final action you can do is research. Move your research die up one level to indicate that you've done this action. When you reach a level of six on this die, you get to take an advance card at the end of your turn. Now just what are those advance cards anyway? They're split up into two groups. Black Gambit cards are used immediately and discarded as soon as they're used. They can help you expand your fleet, increase dominance, sabotage opponents, stuff like that. 
white command cards are placed here along your player board. These give you special abilities in maneuvering, fighting, researching, and so on. They can be held and used for the entire game every turn, but you can only keep three at a time. If you choose to grab a fourth card, you must discard a different one. You may choose either a black or a white advance card when you choose one. You get a choice of one of the six face-up cards on the table, and you replace it with a new card from the draw pile once you've made your choice. Now I want to let you know a little bit about your ship's special abilities. I told you that the lower numbered ships were strong but slow. The higher numbered ships are quick but weak. However, on every turn, each of your ships can perform its own special unique ability, and it won't count as one of your three actions on your turn. A battle station gets a free attack, even if it's already moved and attacked this turn. A flagship has the ability to pick up and transport any ship surrounding it. That ship can then make its own movement afterwards. A destroyer can warp or change positions with any other ship in your fleet, even if it's already moved this turn. A frigate can modify itself from a 4 into a 3 or into a 5. An interceptor is the only ship that is allowed to move diagonally, and a scout gets a free reconfigure roll. So what makes this game so fun? Well, it's easy to learn and to teach because it has a simple set of rules. It's tense because you're constantly trying to prevent each other from scoring those quantum cubes and winning the game. Those advanced cards can really give your faction a technological leg up on the competition and make the game really interesting, especially when you get a sweet combo. And it can all be played in less than an hour. Not bad for a 4X game after all. I suggest you play this game yourself, and if you've been on the fence about buying it, I can assure you that you won't be disappointed. Go ahead and take that quantum leap.